Here we are uh, near Ballywalter, County Down, about a mile inland from Ballywalter at White Church Cemetery. And in the middle of this historic old graveyard is the old White Church ruins. And it's believed that the church dates away back to about 1400. So it's a very, very old established church. And it fell into uh, disrepair. Uh, it was revived again when the Scots settlers came with Sir James Hamilton, later Viscount Clandyboy, and Montgomery of the Ards, the great Scottish landowners. Uh, it was revived by the Hamiltons and it's believed to have continued as an active parish church here till round about 1680 and was replaced by the church which is still there, the very old church at Billigan, a couple of miles away. So what we see here are the ruins of a, a church dating from about 1680 or 1690 when it was abandoned and um, around it is really the history not just of Bally Walter and the families but uh, a lot of the history of County Down as well. And some of the graves we'll see are, well they vary from the um, 1798 rebellion uh, to the First World War and uh, the graveyard is still in use. It's extensive and uh, sad but also fascinating to wander around in the peace of the County Down countryside. One of the fascinating graves is uh, to a local man who was killed at the time of the 1798 rebellion. Um, a lot of United Irish men came from this particular area and they all formed up when the order was given and the attack locally was on the garrison in Newton Orange Market House which is still there. It's the Ards Arts Centre and former Town Hall still in use in Conway Square but it was garrisoned by English Redcoats and the, these were amateur soldiers never obviously been in action before um, but they all charged down North Street in Newtonards, but whenever they were met by a volley of fire, um, for the first time in their lives, people started to um, fall and uh, they fled, but not before a number were killed. And there's supposed to be three, at least three, buried here in Bally Walter. Um, and it's interesting that they give the date, 10th of June 1798, on the headstone, um, but not the reason. It doesn't say anything about why he was killed because you can imagine that the family um, um, would have risked the uh, enmity of the government and uh, they would in later years want to keep quiet, certainly at the time away for years later, keep quiet about um, family members being involved. There's also a, a war grave, an official Commonwealth war grave, one of the standard war grave headstones from the First World War and it's to a sailor and his body drifted ashore. Uh, his ship was sunk off the Scottish coast, just about 20 miles away, and with a very heavy loss of life by a submarine. And it was the first time that uh, anyone had been lost at sea in the Irish Sea by a submarine attack. There been, had been submarines, but it was a very new weapon. And in fact, the British Navy didn't think at first submarines would ever get as far as the Irish Sea. But this ship, the Bayano, was going from Glasgow to Liverpool, and she was sunk heavy loss of life and this um, seaman named Chater and um, he drifted ashore here his body and there are others in different graveyards around the peninsula. There's also a very sad gravestone um, erected by a woman whose husband and four sons all died within a week or ten days of each other um, through the flu epidemic. You hear a lot about the First World War and the people who were killed obviously but there was a huge number of people killed at the end of the war, died through the, the dreadful pandemic of flu, and uh, it seemed to strike especially youngish men. And it's a really sad gravestone indeed. So, uh, as well as that, there's um, a memorial erected by a local man. His sons had been killed in the First World War, because their bodies had been buried in France. Um, so. There's various aspects of not just local history and in the middle of the church, in the actual ruins of the church, is the burial ground of the 
big local landowners, the Mulhollands, who um, later got the title Lord Dunleith, there's a present Lord Dunleith, and um, one of the people buried there, one of the women, from maybe around about, died maybe around about 1880, 1900. Uh, her mother was a niece of Jane Austen. Jane Austen had no um, children herself, um, but she had nieces, two nieces who came um, and lived in Donegal, and one of their daughters married into the Mulholland family and is buried here at Whitechurch. So um, that's only a sample of uh, the range of people. Another gravestone talks about how uh, the deceased in the grave had um, sailed round the world with Admiral Anson, one of the first British round the world expeditions. So it's a really fascinating place.